Rui, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. So, uh, one of the issues with aquaculture is how to be sustainable, and for that, uh, a new type of feeds have to be used, and vegetable feeds, it's what people are uh, using a lot these days. Uh, that brings the issue that you talked today about, which is mycotoxins that come with the vegetable feeds. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? Then? Yeah, so well, what we have been done in, in Biomin is exactly that. So we tried to, with, um, with the reduction of the feed, uh, fish meal inclusion in the diets and the in increase of uh, plant meals in the diets, we see that there are a huge probability of bringing mycotoxins for, for, for the aqua feeds. And what we do every year, we, we run a biomine, what we call the biomine uh, survey, mycotoxin survey, that is exactly to, to have a, an idea of the, the type of mycotoxins and the level of mycotoxins on aquafeeds and also on the plant meals that are used in, in the, in the aquafeeds. And what we see nowadays is exactly that uh, the levels that we found in the, in the aquafeeds, they are already within the sensitive levels of very important aquatic species that are used in, uh, in aquaculture, especially uh, Asian uh, species. So you think that it would be important for the public health to monitor that and to assure that everything that goes into the market is below those levels? Well, this is a huge problem that we have now in aquaculture sector because well, mycotoxins is, is a hot topic now, so it's coming out just now. We have very few articles on, on the topic and there is no legislated values for maximum levels of mycotoxins on the, the aquatic feeds. So, and by not having a, a maximum levels, so, so it's very difficult for the farmers to understand the risk of having mycotoxins in, the, in, the, in, the, in those feeds. And regarding your question of carryover effects of passing the mycotoxins from the feed to the animals and to the animals for, for the humans, we, we have even less information uh, about that topic. We have, <coughs> I have in mind two articles reporting, uh, especially the one of, uh, when, uh, with one mycotoxin that is called aflatoxin, that we see that there is accumulation of this mycotoxin, this aflatoxin, in the meat of the tilapia in this case. But as I said to you, it's just two, two articles, so we need much more research on, on this topic. And for sure that we need legislation on the aquafeeds or to limit the maximum levels of mycotoxins as we see in the livestock industry. Yeah, so you come from a company and you'll be here at CCMR for a while, for a little bit at least, uh, working with an aqua group, a research group here at CCMR. And what are your thoughts on the cooperation between industry and uh, the public uh, research sector? So I think it's very important to this kind of initiatives to first of all to demonstrate to, to our clients that we we are a scientific based company and we uh, and we have this kind of collaboration it shows that uh, we have very independent researchers working for us and working with us uh, and especially in this topic that there is no much information and for such a company like Biomin doing this type of research is very important to show that there are independent researchers in this case the, the System R and the ACO group that show, that sees that there is a huge interest also on this topic, on the topic of mycotoxins in the aquaculture, and that can be a relevant topic for, for the future and for the sustainability of the sector actually. Thank you very again. Thank and you very uh, much. Good work. Thank you.